Hello, you absolute legends. We have covered some pretty insane Doom speedruns over the past year. Four Shock Blast's almost perfect run of Hangar, Looper's domination of the Chasm, and the bizarre Void Glides perfected by players like JC Dawn and Zero Master. But how hard are these speedruns really? I mean, they don't even kill any monsters. On my last Doom video, I received this comment, stating, Still no speedruns when people kill all enemies and get all the secrets as well. Now that's a challenge. And you know what? They're right. Everything else was too easy. Today we will look at the category where speedrunners actually need to kill every enemy, and unlock every secret. Today we will examine the category known as UV Max. UV standing for Ultra Violence, which is the difficulty setting used, and Max being short for Max Kills. Luckily, it is pretty easy in Doom to know if you've killed everything, as the end screen conveniently shows you what percentage of kills you've achieved. It also shows you the percentage of secrets you've unlocked as well. Truth be told, this isn't exactly the most popular category, and we'll find out why shortly. Your immediate impression may be that having to kill more enemies simply raises the skill cap, but that's not really the case. UV Max is frustratingly reliant on luck due to the mechanics of how Doom weapons work. To find out just how bad it is, I played the first level, E1M1, to see what kind of time I could achieve on UV Max. It's pretty fun at first, mostly because of Doom's amazing controls, but boy is it annoying. In this video we will take a look at the world record for E1M1, the strategy used, my journey over the course of three days, and we'll find out what I eventually managed to achieve. Doom Eternal is coming out in March, and in celebration I'll be giving away two pre-ordered copies of the game. The two winners will be randomly drawn from anyone who can beat the time that I managed to achieve on E1M1 UV Max. I'll be giving you a few weeks, which is much more time than I spent on this, so it should be pretty achievable for you. Now sit back and prepare to take notes as we torture ourselves with one of Doom's most annoying categories, UV Max. Now before we go on, I have to give a quick shout out to this video sponsor, ExpressVPN. Last month I finally signed up to Netflix and I've been using ExpressVPN to get access to way more shows and movies than I otherwise would have access to. In my opinion, it is a no-brainer. If you're spending money on a streaming service, you may as well spend a fraction more and get access to everything that's out there. Epic shows like Breaking Bad aren't available in my country, but I am just one click away from getting access. Now obviously, if you do want to stream HD content through a VPN, you need one that has fast speeds, and ExpressVPN is consistently faster than other VPN providers. The other features a VPN provides, such as anonymity, are just the icing on the cake. ExpressVPN costs less than $7 a month, and there is a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there is no risk to trying it out. Take back your internet privacy today and find out how you can get three months free by clicking the link in the description. Head to expressvpn.com slash carljobst and give it a go today. The world record for E1M1 UV Max is 28 seconds, set by none other than the Hangar Master himself for a shock blast on the 5th of September 2016. Let's take a look at the run in full. It actually seems pretty straightforward, most of the run seems to involve clearing mobs with the shotgun, and there doesn't appear to be much in the way of crazy movement. The sheer amount of enemies you need to dispatch means that a lot of the time you'll be restricted in how fast you can get through the stage, and you'll be spending a lot of time waiting for the shotgun to ready itself for the next shot. Whenever I learn a speedrun, I like to take it very casually and easily to begin with. My goal isn't to be a hero on day one, but rather just to learn and internalize as much as possible. Ideally, we would be able to completely visualize the world record run in its entirety in our mind. If we did, we'd have everything we need, including the strategy and optimal movement patterns. That is really hard to do though, especially from just watching the video a few times. So I like to play the level a few times and then go back and watch the video again. I'll repeat this process a few times, as each time I go back to the video, I can begin to see the smaller details. Details that I would normally overlook without the experience I've attained through playing the level. 
Even subtle differences can turn out to have major consequences later on if you don't have a deep understanding of the overall strategy. For example, to begin with I had no idea how 4 Shock Blast had the platform of one of the secrets lowered in the far corner. Whenever I went there it was always raised. This platform is lowered by crossing a line at the entrance to the green slime room. I figured that he was just so fast that he was still down by the time he got there. But when I looked at the video closer I noticed that it was actually lowering as he got there. There was no way he was triggering it himself, so something else was happening. I just couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong, so I asked the Doom speedrunning Discord and learned that it was actually an enemy that was triggering in the platform. An enemy that Shock had left alive earlier in the run. The fact that this one monster was left alive was such a small detail that I didn't even notice it. And when I was playing the level myself I was just killing everything. At first my movement was pretty terrible, but it was never going to remain that way. You just need to push through the learning stage and realize that as long as you keep trying, you'll inevitably improve. You don't need to try to force it, just put in the time and let the process happen naturally. I wasn't using the exact same strategy as the world record run, as it was quite obvious that you needed to be pretty fast in order to pull it off. It didn't take too long though to start getting a grip on what was happening, and after about an hour's worth of practice I got my time down to 42 seconds. An hour really isn't a long time, but I was already getting extremely frustrated. Now is a good time to talk about the main thing that makes this category so bad to play, and that's the shotgun. It is so, so inconsistent. Sometimes a single blast will take down three enemies, other times you'll be aiming dead on a single monster and it barely makes a scratch. The accuracy is just so bizarre, and the damage inflicted appears to be completely random. Not only is the shotgun seemingly useless most of the time, but on top of that you actually need the monsters to wander into the correct paths so that you can kill more than one at a time. Even then you'll be lucky to kill anything, for example in this clip I kill three monsters with one shot. In this next clip, I'm going to shoot on the very next frame. Guess how many monsters I'm going to kill. This was a trick question because the answer is zero. Even the pistol which only appears in the run for a few seconds has a massive amount of RNG. In this run I kill the first monster in two bullets. In the next run I unload five bullets at point blank range and he's still alive. We are three seconds into the run and we've already either gained or lost up to two seconds because of luck. Luck that has absolutely no bearing on skill. It doesn't take immense talent to stand a meter away from a monster spamming the shoot key, and yet the speed at which you can do it is out of your hands. The entire level is pretty bad, but the start is even worse, especially if you want the record. As we just discussed, you're hoping for the first enemy to die quickly. When you pull out the shotgun the monster on the left needs to be visible. He has a habit of remaining behind the pillar, making him impossible to kill. The two guards above the stairs can be taken out in one hit, which is what Shock does in the record, but this is really rare. Sometimes one of these zombies will stand too far back, meaning you can't shoot them at all. The next section is actually pretty consistent. You can get pretty lucky and kill the three mobs in the center with one hit, but generally you'll be spending two shots. The overall theme of the level is to shoot the least amount of times as possible. In order to achieve this, you need good enemy placement, good weapon spread, and good luck with the weapon damage. Multiply these requirements many times throughout the level, and you're left with a tiny chance of having everything go optimally. One of the most annoying things you have to deal with is the enemy you leave alive not triggering the secret. Sometimes he doesn't follow you at all, and mindlessly wanders the middle section. This happened a couple of times on some of my best runs. I tried to implement as many things as I could from the world record strategy, but some of them ended up being too inconsistent for me to continue using. For example, part of the strategy is to destroy these two barrels to eliminate a few mobs on the edges of the room. Shock shoots the first barrel through the shotgunner, saving a shot. Not only does this rely on getting good weapon spread and damage, but you also need the monster to walk in the right direction. If he doesn't cooperate it's impossible to pull this off. I ended up just shooting him as soon as the door opens, before detonating the barrels. Shock opens the secret door and shoots the enemies down the stairs before hitting the other two secrets. But I ended up doing this later in the run, because I was usually not fast enough to make it to the lowering platform in time. At the end of the first day I had lowered my time to 40 seconds. By the second day I had achieved 37 seconds. I was really considering stopping here, as I figured 37 was already pretty good and would give most people a decent challenge. 
But on the third day, my frustration had seemingly waned, so I gave it another go. And on the 29th of December 2019, I achieved this run. Obviously, it's not perfect, but considering how shocking the level is to play, I'm pretty happy with it. It will be interesting to see how many of you will have the mental fortitude to grind something lower. In principle, adding more tasks or enemies to kill, therefore increasing the complexity is a good way to raise the skill cap, but unfortunately for Doom, it just introduces too much luck to make the competition viable. Doom 2, on the other hand, is seen as a lot better to play, as the super shotgun is much more consistent. With a game like Goldeneye where every shot does the same amount of damage, you could see how skill would play a much larger role. But if the damage each shot inflicts is random, it just makes the entire thing a giant lottery. This is why the standard categories like UV speed, where you just have to finish the level, are much more popular. Doom movement is more consistent and is therefore a better metric to compare each other's skill. Now, at the beginning of the video, I mentioned I will be giving away two pre-ordered copies of Doom Eternal, releasing in March. In order to enter, simply record a video or demo of yourself completing E1-M1 with 100% kills and secrets in 35 seconds or less. Place the video or demo in my Discord, where I've set up a channel designated for this event. Out of the entries, two random players will be selected, and the draw date will be on the 21st of January. Winners will be announced in a video, along with the names of all the people who were able to complete the challenge. If you are unsure how to start speedrunning Doom, I suggest joining the Doom speedrunning Discord. I will put a link to it in the description. Thanks for watching, you legends. I hope you are having a fantastic day. Good luck, and I will see you in the next video.